All right, well, good morning from Grand Rapids, Michigan. I am, this is the last day, it's Sunday morning, uh, 17th February, 2019. I'm at the Growing Together Conference here in Grand Rapids at the uh, Amway Grand Plaza. I got one more video to post. That we did a tour of the milk processing facility in Coopersville on Friday. We got another one that, to post here. Uh, this video is about the uh, Grand Valley State's University Water Research uh, Facility for the Great Lakes up in Muskegon. Had some interesting things, a lot of it related to agriculture, a lot about phosphates, uh, runoff, retention, uh, wetland restoration, things like that. So as I go through this, don't wait till the end if you have a question, just yell it out, right? All right. I know Farm Bureau is not shy, so <laughs> our mission is to integrate research, education, outreach, preserve and enhance our freshwater resource conservancy. As we eradicate these populations, we want to see whether there's genetic differences in their resistance and resilience to the different types of treatments to get rid of them. So um, we're also applying this kind of technique for fish as well, but baby's breath is really cool. And the graduate students really like this, but in particularly dealing with phosphorus, how we can reduce phosphorus concentrations in these systems. Just to give you a, a one example, these um, two uh, effluent that's coming off these fields are actually going through these slag beds Slag is rich in iron, iron binds phosphorus, so that when it comes out, one, but when we reformed in 86, the, the real mission of the Institute was to be an objective third party source of science. We work with the Department of Agriculture, and we're seeing if we can detect E. coli using the flow cytometer. So I'm coming up with a variety of ways to label them, and then we use the flow cytometer. Grad, graduate, former graduate. And then Travis is in the fish lab, former graduate student technician. Uh, Biosand filters, I don't know if you're familiar with these, but basically um, we are deploying these in developing countries that have polluted water that's attached to the top of this, which is being retrofitted right now. And then we have uh, water quality sensors that go down for acres moving in three dimensions. So what we found is, it's incredible in Muskegon Lake, um, that the water actually is bi-directional. So we can have water from Muskegon River coming into Muskegon Lake and going out into Lake Michigan through the navigation channel through a series of filters, and then it's gravity fed into each of these individual tanks. And then we can control the lights through these metal halide lamps above them and control the heights to change the light intensity on these tanks. We've done um, studies looking at what kind of contaminants affect yellow perch, walleye, sediment. We can change the voltage, thank you. We can change the voltage in there, it'll stun the fish, uh, so we'll be on the bow here with nets to net the fish as they come up to the top. Incredibly, incredibly aggressive and litigious to come to an area where you're appreciated and uh, you don't have to watch every word you say for fear that you're going to be a lost in graph. So we can look at uh, chemicals in very, very low concentrations, very fine tolerance kinds of instrumentation. We've been looking at different PCBs. There's like over 100 congeners of PCBs. Microcystin, the toxin that comes from blue-green algae, there's over a hundred different forms of that. And this can be applied towards, and in her case, the baby's breath right now, but also fish, which is what she worked on before she came here and will return to. She's also doing this, in fact, I think, that scan. Right, so there's a rendering of the buoy with the sensors. Uh, Katie's doing her graduate thesis on the, on the, uh, on the buoy and the metabolism associated with the lake. If you have questions, like I said, feel free to contact me. Do you Google it? Do you like it?